I don't want to just say, hey, this is within you. I forgive you. You know, it's just, you know, there needs to be some sort of experience because, I mean, I don't want to say words that I don't mean, you know. It's Kayla Bannister here, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our 10th episode. Louise Schumann and I are so excited to be hosting Miss Angela today where she's going to be speaking about her past and all the things she has walked through and how every year she has learned different parts of her cultural heritage, meaning that she's Italian, she's colored, she's Gosla. There's so much gold that she has to offer. So Angela, welcome to We Talk Story. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be here. <laughs> Yeah, so I met Angela uh, a couple of years ago during the Principles of Redeeming Culture School at Grassy Park, Cape Town, South Africa. And Angela is really a beautiful lady. She's an artist and she's really passionate about performing arts. But there's a lot more that we're going to discover about it today. (laughs) So yeah, Angela, I think one thing I'm sure people are puzzled about you when they meet you is your looks. People probably ask you about your cultural backgrounds. Probably one of the first questions they ask you when they meet you. Is that true? Uh, no. <laughs> no. So I do. Uh, no, I I see the looks, you know, but I feel like people are just. I don't know because like I've got fair skin, you know, so I I could be white English or Afrikaans, but then I've got curly hair, so you know I could be coloured, and then you know they hear me speak, and it's just like whoa. And then I've got this name, you know, Angela Martina Del Fava, you know, that sounds foreign, you know. So it's just all of these things. Italian, so, you know, it's definitely Italian, yeah. So. Like, no one has ever, like, a friend asked me, like, hey, are you, okay. you know? Um, but I, I do see that in the looks, like, people are trying to, you know. But it's when I introduce myself, like, Angela Martina Del Favre, the name is sort of like the springboard for people to ask, like, okay, so is that, you know, is that Portuguese? Is that Italian? You know? And then I explain to them, yes, it's an Italian name. You know, my dad's Italian. I've got this mix. So that's where the cultural um, discussions come about. But it's never mm-hmm. stayed on like, hey, <laughs> yeah. It's, I think it's, a, it's just a bit awkward, you know, like, <laughs> you know, a, a person's got all of these combinations. You don't know where to, mm-hmm. but yeah. Yeah. So, so tell us about your, your um, cultural background. My cultural background. So, um. From my mom's side, I've got English and Zulu roots. And then from my dad's side, it's Italian and Kosa roots. So those are the the, wow. the, the four main cult- cultures in my family. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Angela, how, how old are you? I am 21 years old, yes. <laughs> well, you know, I actually saw I was representing the young ones <laughs> on your platform. Mm. Like, I'm the youngest here. Like... <laughs> No pressure. What? Pressure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I mean yeah. I, I ask because I think uh you know, so much as as yeah, as you said, a bit younger in the earlier twenties. Mm. Um when when we have done these podcasts and when we've been speaking with people, um it's it feels sometimes like a hit and miss. And you know, some people they hear it and they relate to different cultural questions. Um some people really don't because they've just been so grown up in what is the kind of Western. And so living here in Canada, where I see a lot of immigrants who've come here, but they, they've completely tur- turned off their cultural side and they've just mm. embraced the whole Canadian side, dare I say the whole white side, even though they may be brown as anything. So I think it's, uh, it's a really interesting uh, topic today because... We're going to get to hear from someone like you who has done several schools around the area of cultural redemption. You've done a lot of stuff with reconciliation and forgiveness about your culture. Um, and so I know Luis is going to ask a few more questions, but mm-hmm. for those that would be listening, it's it's exciting because you have honestly gone through so much with your own story and your own background, and you do not fit the normal mold as a 21-year-old in South Africa. Um, which is awesome. So 
<laughs> we are so stoked. Yeah. Thank you, Caleb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so Angela, what what have you experienced has really been challenging growing up, having that combination in your bloodlines? What has been challenging? What did you struggle to overcome with? What kind of questions have you been struggling with? Yeah. So when I grew up, this whole aspect of culture it wasn't too familiar like I just knew I was colored and then that's it um I had you know um like I went to multi-racial schools so it was just like okay that's a Zulu that's a Kosa that's a Pedi you know so <laughs> that's a white mm. like I, I knew other people I didn't know the value of it I just knew that their cultures were much stronger than mine because they have mm. um brighter um dances they have you know my understanding of culture was really just the songs and the dances and the rituals and you know I didn't really I didn't really in in inverted commas I didn't really have that in my um in my family or in my worldview so um some of the struggles really was just um yeah like the the main like it started with uh, my dad like he left me when I was five years old so I grew up like fatherless and he you know our father is supposed to be that one to affirm your identity and all of that so that that link was missing and um my mother at the time was also under that um culture it's just you know we just it's for them it's not really you know we just call it that's our title and then there's nothing more attached to it so like the search of identity like for me as an individual, like it was a, not passive, an, aggr an aggressive search. I just didn't know what to call it. <laughs> uh, the fruit of me finding my identity was in the stuff that I would do. Like I try and, you know, make a lot of friends. I try to excel greatly at school to sort of put my identity there. Like I'm the one who excels in school. I'm the one who does this and this and this and this mm. well. Um, so and even when it got to high school, it took a complete different turn where I started to try and find my identity in men. And it was just, you know, finding my, trying to find who I am in the all the wrong places. Um, but then I met Jesus, you know, and then he just took me on this great journey. And, you know, we're here today. So those are the few challenges amongst bullying and, and, and all of those things um, amidst just me thinking being a colored is just being a colored. You know, there's nothing mm. attached to that. So, yeah. Angela, what um, is your mother tongue? What is your first language? English. And do you speak Afrikaans? I, <laughs> so now I can. Um, okay. being, being in Cape Town, I can speak quite a bit. I'm just a little bit shy, but in my yeah. private spaces, I can speak Afrikaans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still <laughs> developing the courage you know, okay. to speak it out there, but you know, in the in the house did your, without roots, I do speak yes. a little bit. Did your parents mm -hmm. speak to you growing up in Afrikaans? So, no, they spoke to me in English. Uh, my mm -hmm. dad, though, his mother tongue is Afrikaans, but he didn't okay. because I couldn't understand. I I asked that because you know, even for me, growing up as a Kenyan, but I grew up speaking English, and so you know. There is definitely a thing in me that if there was to be a, a sense or a bit of regret was that I did not know more of my own language. Now, mm. as time has passed as a 27 year old, 26 year old, um, I, I have come to learn a bit more of my language and can understand it a bit better. But that was also something for me that I, and still do and to some small uh, degrees where I'm like, oh, I wish I knew more of mm. my language. So... Uh, it's for those that cannot see Angela, she's a beautiful woman and her <laughs> accent just like puts it out there. Cause you know, I, it's so strong and it's just like, what? what? Uh, yeah. I, lo I love it. Sometimes I feel like I need subtitles, but I love it. And I say that, and you know, I say that with such a high appreciation. Is there, is there one of your languages that you would like to learn? One of the ones from your heritage, from your family mm. going yes. back so uh, like well there's english there's afrikaans um mm. which i'm i'd say i'm about 
60 percent day you know wow. 60 percent awesome. day a, a lot of growth has taken place in these three years like just hearing the language reading it it's, it yeah um so with zulu and italian <laughs> so um i learned i'm learning zulu through a lot of songs like i i like a lot of my playlist it's full of um mm. zulu uh yeah songs mm-hmm. if i can say that yeah so and like just this morning i <laughs> I um over the weekend yes. I I watched the movie and at the end of the movie there was this Italian song and I was like wait whoa I'm gonna learn the song so like I pulled out the guitar hey I'm learning guitar by the way <laughs> I don't know Yay. if I told you yes <laughs> so I I just picked up my guitar found the chords of the song and started learning it like that so that's that's sort of my the, the way that works best for me I remember mm. it more if I if I think of a song mm. and an experience and. So it's it's those two that I'm currently working on. Kosa and Zulu, you know, they similar, but I'll get there. <laughs> yeah, but it's those two for now. Yeah. You mentioned wow. in your notes that there was a bit of a journey for you regarding your cultural identity and shame. So how how did yeah. that look like for you? Oh man. So the shame so the cultural identity started um late high school when I well I, I've always been a part of the art group since grade eight but it was late high school where I started realizing that hmm. so we, we we did a lot of productions on the history of South Africa apartheid and like that was always the theme somehow and uh, I would always get put as the white lady you know so <laughs> it was in those productions hold up there's some connection going on Louise yes. I think yeah, no, uh-huh, it's true. Uh-huh, love it I've also love had it, to play it. the white lady <laughs> although I am that wow <laughs> I play the black man <laughs> <laughs> I only lasted one production they're like Caleb you know you're better loading the van I'm joking, oh, I'm joking. no <laughs> no <laughs> small truth in that no no I'm joking <laughs> I love oh my, my word. Oh my gosh. <laughs> hey, so yeah, um that's when I get put in those characters and just the just the 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 role that the white lady had to play in, you know, being the 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 master's wife and you just speak like this to the slaves and to the, the non whites and just those things it started it started there where I started thinking like, yo, mm. okay, I've got British blood, like hey, hmm. You know, I started making those connections in my brain, but it was a very passive one. It mm-hmm. wasn't one where I was like, yo, I need to change this. Or, you know, it wasn't really anything like that until I joined South Roots. And South Roots Ministry of Cultural Redemption and Reconciliation, People Groups and this and this and this. Um, yeah, I, that's when I started taking um, the history of the British specifically a lot more serious. Um, that's where the shame came in because I was like, whoa, this is what they did. And, you know, like when I look in the mirror, I see um, fair skin, fair skin, white, white. So I would have a lot of those personal struggles within me, but I would know that, hey, there's forgiveness and then there's, you know, there's all of this waiting for you. But I, I struggled with that a lot and... Yeah, so that's sort of where the shame pulled in. But the whole time, I really just felt God say, like, just just trust me. Like, you know, when, um, so with, with the college, right, we have, um, we, we love jazz and, you know, there's just this dance that we do. Mm. And I've never been a good dancer. <laughs> but the role of the guy when you um jazzing is that he is to lead you. You just you need to follow and that you feel when his hands go like this, that, okay, he's going to turn you there, he's going to turn you there. That's the sort of picture I got when I was like, hey, Lord, this is this is the thing. Um, I don't want to just say, hey, British within you, I forgive you. You know, it's just, you know, <laughs> there needs to be some sort of experience because, I mean, I don't want to say words that I don't mean, you know. Yeah, so it was just trusting God's leading and and yeah, so 
I, I don't know if you can get into that later in the conversation, but that's no, sort of weird. You can go it's, there. How 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 go. was the journey then? Yeah, go for that. Yeah, <laughs> I started learning a lot about the British, about the Zulu, about the Kosas, and about the Italian in my first year of South Roots. But it was mainly the British and the Zulu. Um, my best friend Olutando, she's Zulu, you know, so I just got to observe her and just you know, she just exudes, you know, the original intention of Zulu. <laughs> you know she's just such yeah she's such a darling but i got to observe her and then i obviously also got to observe on tishanet um and see the two and um see them in the original design and that's sort of how it started like with the research and then was just observing them and um in my second year i started also uh researching about the italian not really the Tosa. But the Italian, the, the, the Tosa, I think, was... Oh, I struggle with saying the... But yeah, the Tosa actually came this year with this outreach that we went to three months ago. But I'll get there. Uh, but yeah, it was really just trusting God's leading and I'll bring in what you need when you need it, you know. But yeah, so with the, with the British, there was... Like, they had been that shame for quite a long time. And, like, especially when I had to now in South Roots again play the role of the white lady. But also with knowing what I know, um, like, a lot of the history, I was listening to it, not just shoving it at the back of my mind. Like, in high school, I'll just do it for the sake of doing it. But in South Roots, learning the history, knowing that God has seen all of this, that this had broken his heart, that this had broken people, you know, just just all of that, um, and it was really <laughs> up until three weeks ago. That's why um, I told. I think I said I shared I shared with you, Louise, um, the timing of this. Uh, I really believe that God had delayed this. I think Kayla spoke to me earlier in the year, but God had delayed this because I needed to go through something, and uh, that sort of incident was when we were at a closer um, church. And we were there to represent in our people group, you know. So I, you know, dress up as the British, everyone else is who they are. And in that week before the church, I had learned the history of the British and the Tosa. And again, the British, they used the name of Jesus to destroy. And I was like, no. <laughs> No, the people are sitting in poverty. They are hurt. They are broken. I, I asked the guy who, the, the pastor actually, who shared the story about the, the British and the Tosa, does he still see their gift? Because um, he shared that the Tosa, they were giving people, they were hospitality people, they were this and they were that. I'd ask him, okay, so after, you know, the British had done what they did, does he still today see the gift of the Tosas in his people? Like that gift before colonization and he looked at me and he said no and yo I cannot explain what happened in my heart in that moment I just bawled because I was like no so the God-given gift where is it today in the people because of my people and it was such a struggle because I identify with Kosa I identify with British so I was like caught between the two and yeah so fast forward to the church i was there representing the british with um it was a predominantly closer church and i'm like lord i don't i feel i don't feel like i should be here um regarding the history of the british to these people i don't think i should be here and then there was time for for offering <laughs> um and then i i felt to to open my purse and to give and all I had was a 50 cents, a 20 cents, and a 10 cents. <laughs> so I was shut. I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to give, you know, to sort of redeem what was done in the past with the British. But I had this, <laughs> I had such a small amount, you know. I was just like, ah, and I'm, I'm going to be obedient with this. And I gave it. And God was really just like, y y this is what the British has, has, has done. Um, but with your obedience, um, just just trust that your walk um, in being obedient and in um, accepting the British within you, that is going to um, heal the lives of many. And in that that day, Auntie Jeanette stood up and she shared 
and I could just sit back and watch her. And God was like, you see, you see, you see, mm. um, there is, there, there, as much as the hurt that's been happening in the past, there is hope. And will you choose that or will you, you know, stay in that place mm. of, mm, you know, this is what we did. And, mm, there's no sort of forgiveness. And as I was watching on Tishanet, I, in that moment, I forgave the British within me for the first time. And and I've been in South Roots for three years now, and I've always been blessing the British. We have a song called um, Reflection of Light, and um, I bless the British. But it's always been, like, I, I would always have Auntie Jeanette's face in mind, and I'd bless her and the others, but never the British in in me. Mm. Um, but that day, after Auntie Jeanette spoke, we got up there to do the song. And for the first time, I blessed the British within me. And yo, I cannot explain your, the, the, I just felt like something was, you know, released in my heart, you know? So for, for the struggles that I had in the beginning, just trusting God's leading like the chairs, you know, trusting that he's going to push me there, that he's going to turn me there, got me to that place. Um, and yeah, yeah, has got me here to share that story. So yeah, I'm really, I'm super grateful, guys. <laughs> yeah. Wow, phenomenal, Angela. Uh, that's that's, yeah. So thank you. I don't want to rush what you just said, but I did have another question I wanted to ask earlier. Mm. Um, and I don't, but yeah, Luis, you want to? No, I'm. I'm just thinking maybe we should just quickly mm. explain the setup. So you guys were on a tour mm. recently to the Eastern Cape, right? Yes. Yeah. So the Eastern Cape was uh, uh, an area that's traditionally that was where the Kosa people was was based. Um, in the 1800s, the British people um, landed at one of the ports there, and then a lot of the the Eastern Cape. Uh, many parts was given to some of the British settlers that came at that time. I don't know, was there a specific story that the pastor told you guys? How the Kosa people got hurt in this whole process? Is there something you can share about that part? Um, yeah, so he shared that um, the, the Kosa people, they live there. Um, just he, he explained their way of life. So the way their houses were even situated. Mm -hmm. So he said that there was just this main house for the family, but they would build a specific house for travelers. So if you're on your way, you have this whole house yourself. And mm -hmm. um, the, the night where there would be a guest or a traveler, they would slaughter a sheep or a cow or any sort of meat. Um, they were rich in cattle, by the way rich they had abundance of cattle mm. so they would slaughter a, a sheep or a goat and uh the family would have half of that sheep and then or that goat and then they would give the other half to the traveler for their their way um so that was just their way of life you know they were givers they were farmers they were skilled they yeah mm. hospitable people mm. and then the british came right and so they they shared the gospel with the, the Tosa people and they received it well. But there was this one girl in the in the community. I, I I can't remember her name now, but she was like a prophetic voice in the community. Young girl. Um, but then the British they convinced her to share with the rest of the, the people that Jesus is coming tomorrow or soon and that they need to um burn all of their crops, kill all of their livestock, and just wait. And that didn't happen. And the people, a lot of them died of starvation. Mm. Um, yeah, extreme poverty from there. Yeah. So there's yeah. real extreme hurts against Christians because of that reason, eh? Hurts by yes. Christians. Yeah. 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 And South Roots International... Um, is an incredible vehicle of putting on productions of what um, has happened in the past. And so those listening, that's what they, uh, when they do these tours, they, they put on productions, they write a lot of, they write their, all their stops, all their songs. And mm -hmm. uh, the songs aren't just, uh, yeah, they're not just simple four minute songs. They're songs that have been uh, 
conceived over a long period of time. And mm-hmm. every time we play, a, uh, you, you hear one of the songs, it's a very significant. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Angela, I, w- I, I, want, I wanted to ask, um, and again, I don't, I don't maybe expect you to have an answer for this question because I, I, I'm still wondering, as a 21-year-old, with what you have shared and with what you have experienced in these past three years, um, with the generation now, and I'm who, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with TikTok, but the generation now that is very much in this other side of life of just social media caught up on themselves where cultural identity could mean they could care less about, but knowing the depth and the significance of what you've gone through, how do you think, and I think this question is just to tickle ideas. How do you think you play a role in your generation? You know what I'm saying? Like where it's a generation, like I said, that is so self-absorbed about their own selves. Um, because I think, you know, if we're walking down, um, the boardwalk and you try to tell someone, they'll be like, ah, yeah, I'm Indian. I got this in me. I got this, ah, whatever. I'm going to go see a movie. So how do you think your story of healing, reflection, all of that can, can call out if you know what I'm saying? Yeah. As you, as you're speaking, like, I just have the picture of Nolotando in mind because she, Um, she knows who she is in her culture and when she Mm. fully operates in that even on tiktok you do get a lot of engagement so i think it's just knowing who you are standing in that and 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 allowing that to infiltrate into whatever you do like with me specifically in my artwork in visual arts like my first the first ever visual art piece that i sold was a it was a it was a couple that I had sold, but the first edition <laughs> was mm. celebrating the different cultures, and and a lot of people were like, "Yo, how much? What? How much is this? How can I?" You know, so a lot of people were waiting to wow. to get their hands on that, and I was like, "Yo, this is my first time selling art, like what?" So I think it's just op- operating in your gifts with that as well and not separating it from what you do on the daily um but even in those spaces in in social media like to 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 get there and to just to to just to just be um yeah and create that 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 place for observation attraction and all of those the steps of reconciliation that we we speak about in 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 is but but yeah and then to allow conversation to yeah to flow out of that yeah because a lot of um people our our age in in our generation there's a specific image that you Mm -hmm. must you know you must fit this image you know if you want to be a slay queen you've got to have your eyebrows like this you've got to you know (laughs) but um what i've seen nolutando do specifically and it's really inspired me i'm like you have got all these people groups i need to get the you know (laughs) So she mm-hmm. she incorporates her beads into her everyday yeah. casual wear, um, and we are talking about this in in the taxi when we are coming back from outreach for it not to be a heritage day where this day I wear my cultural attire, but for it to be a heritage mm. life mm. <laughs> to love your it life. It just makes sense. Express, it just makes sense. Hashtag heritage life. <laughs> I yeah. love that. So yeah. I think a part of that also means you need to walk around with a pizza in your hand. Representing the Italian side, yeah. you know, or just put grease all over your or face. Know how I don't know. to make the best pizza in the world and be known for it. Yes. Angela, you mentioned the steps of reconciliation, and we haven't really. I've, I've we've written a blog a blog about that, but I think mm. can you just shortly ex- explain it a little bit more that people understand what you talk about? What are the okay. different steps and the purpose of it? Yeah. Okay. So um, with steps of reconciliation, it's just like any other relationship. Um, but for example, let's take a man and a woman, you know, you've got to observe each other. And then once you observe each other, it's like, okay, you know, he's a little, he's attractive, you know, he's, you know, so it's observation, it's attraction, you know, when you get to know, okay, this person is into this, they like this, this is what they value. And then after attraction, it is, sorry, is it covenant? Yes, it's covenant where you guys are. Oh, it's courtship, courtship. Sorry, courtship. Mm. After courtship. Get you skipping ahead, easy <laughs> with the steps. <laughs> One, two, three. Bada bing, bada boom. I'm just saying. Oh, Caleb. 
<laughs> yes, it's quite a, Sorry. you know, where you guys uh, uh. commit to take this journey to walk together, to get to know each other better, and then it's covenant. Um, mm. I mean, you know, covenant, and then after covenant, it's fruitfulness. Or not, is it handsome? It's, it's five. Wait, sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna get the order right. Observation, okay. attraction, courtship. No judgment. No, I was actually the courtship. Uh, uh, gosh, covenant, intimacy, fruitfulness. I think covenant and yeah. intimacy is the same thing. Yeah, and then fruitfulness, where <laughs> just this union blesses people around you. So um, we take those same that same model and we apply it to people groups. So um, yeah, to create pl- platforms for observation and attraction. That's what we do at South Roots. We create platforms. Mm-hmm. So we use um, dancers from the Zulu and we portray a message of, um, like we have the, the, the Zulu dance, it's called Mshatu. And uh, mm-hmm. we use that to, to also um, spread the message of, you know, God, uh, God in the church and just that whole sort of relationship with reconciliation to God and then reconciliation with each other. So, mm. so yeah, we use the arts to provide that platform to hopefully get our nation to the place of fruitfulness. Yeah. 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 And South Africa is such a diverse country and traditionally we has are... so, so many challenges to overcome. Now, when you left to join South Roots, um, you may have been a dancer. You may be. A, you may have been a singer. You may have, you know, done a few public speeches. This or that. Now, three late, three years later, when your family and friends back home see you now, when they see this Angela who is leading dances, who is doing spoken word, who is singing, who is doing all this artistic stuff, who has traveled to many different nations, um, how? I mean. Obviously, the general rea- reaction is, oh, my gosh, look at you. You've grown so much. But uh, what if, if could you say what more impact do you think has been caused to your family and friends who have seen such a div- uh, diverse change in you? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so my family, uh, it, it really is that thing of, wow, you've grown so much. But I think the, the main shock has been, my mom like she's seen me from mm. from when i was I born know. up until now and um initially arts uh, i I, <laughs> I really feel like the art has has chased after me and not the, <laughs> because like when i was younger right my sister was the the artistic one she was the dancer the singer the, you know and i was always like i'm not gonna okay let, let's let her take the limelight i'm gonna be here with my books and you know i was a very you know, mm-hmm. introvert. I don't see myself on stage. Yeah, my mom has seen that stage and me not wanting mm-hmm. it. But the odds, like, I can't explain how, but in grade seven, when I was primary school, my my teacher actually convinced me to sing solo on our CD. And I was just like, okay, I'm just going to do it. Like, I was just that little girl. Like, I'm going to just do whatever the teachers want me to do. Because um, I was a very obedient, you know, there. And then in high school, like, it just, again, I was invited to our art group. But I was, every time I try and dodge, our teacher would say, we want you back in error, we need you back in error, we need you there. So there was just this pull from the arts, right? So um, seeing the art specifically and not anything else change me and mold me and get me to a place of where I'm, I'm, where I'm at with Jesus and where I'm at uh, holistically, it's just mm-hmm. for, for my mother, like she, there's times where she just, I just catch her staring at me and I'm like, ma? Yeah. And she's like, <laughs> when did you, when did this happen? <laughs> when did this happen? You know, um, but with my friends, they just, they, they, they always say, there's just this thing about you. Like you just got this glow in your eyes. You just got this smile. You just got this, this freedom. Like there's, there's those sort of feedback there's that sort of feedback from them and they very recipients it's not just like oh there's this thing you know and you know you're not you you know you up there and i'm not here but it's that thing from them like like i want that too like talk to me like there's just this eagerness to learn you know because they've seen me <laughs> they've seen you know <laughs> before now and it's just like how did this happen so 
So, yeah. So, tell us, I mean, I think what we have not really talked about yet is your story of where did your relationship with God come into the whole story and what, how does it, yeah, I think when you talk about the glow and the vibrance and things like that, it's really something that comes from a relationship with God. So, how how did that happen for you? Mm. So, growing up, like, I knew I knew God, like I, I knew, like I was taught well, like I, I grew up in a Catholic um, school, Catholic home as well. So uh, Jesus and God, it was very infiltrated into what we did. Um, but I only knew Jesus was real when I started having these dreams. I was like, okay, I know <laughs> that the like Jesus that they speak about in school, he is real. <laughs> Um, and I just had this, this this funny feeling inside me when I'd have, or when I think about these dreams, or when I would um, hear um, uh, just just the, the 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 priest read the word. There was just this thing, and I I couldn't put it into, I couldn't explain it, mm. but I just knew that he was real. And um, I had an active, um, act, I was I was an active participant in church right through till high school um it was the the one place i didn't mind going by myself i didn't need anyone to go with me um i just loved church but my life said otherwise but i just loved being Mm. there um (laughs) and i wanted more (laughs) i wanted more and it was in grade 10 or so where i changed churches to like a bible-based church and i I started learning more. My best friend at the time, she she invited me to her church and um, I started going there. And that's when I started taking my relationship with God much more serious. Mm. Um, and then in matric, it was when I, I decided on my own, like, Lord, I'm going to give this a go. I'm going to be serious about this. The way my mm. life is and the way I am here, it needs to come in alignment with you. I am done this double life. <laughs> I'm ready to be open about my my love for you and your love for me. So it was from there that so it's it was the foundation was there. It was just getting my life and everything else into alignment and just starting that journey. And yeah, and then I came to South Roots, did my DTS discipleship training school for yeah, the way South Roots does it is not just six months, but <laughs> It's very really integrated and yeah, however many yeah. So so yeah, that's that's when it started becoming more serious. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about South Roots. I mean, I, I know you guys just this week launched the the opening for the internship for next year. What's a, what is South Roots International? What's who's the kind of people that should join South Roots? Who would benefit from being part of South Roots? Yo, really anyone and everyone. <laughs> Anyone and everyone would benefit from South Roots. Um, but yeah, so South Roots, like I mentioned earlier, it's a ministry of cultural redemption and reconciliation. And so big words, <laughs> uh, cultural redemption is just um, celebrating the different cultures in South Africa and speaking the original God's original design for, for people groups. Um, and then reconciliation, reconciling you know, back to God and, and, and to your neighbor as an individual, but also as a people group and, and as communities and families. And so we use the arts as a tool for that. Um, so wow. we do a lot of dances, we do a lot of singing, we do a lot of poetry. It's, it's, it's just an explosion of the arts. Visual arts is slowly but surely getting there. Um, but yeah, mm. anyone and everyone. Um, and arts is really, like I did not see myself as an artist growing up. I ran away from the arts, (laughs) but slowly embracing the arts, I was just like, wait, you know what? This isn't so bad after all, you know? So whether Mm. you're into art, whether you don't think art is your thing, the tool of the arts is very powerful. Oh, God Mm. uses the powerful, our powerful God uses that tool to to really just do what he needs to do in, in the lives of, in our lives and in the lives of others. So so yeah. And Angela, how how would you define or say or describe the team dynamics, especially for you who came in, and uh, I see you laughing there. People can't see it, but uh, the team dynamics of you coming in, uh, you know, stepping because you're really stepping into something new. So if I yeah, how do you describe? It? Yeah. <laughs> 
don't I'm hold not. back. I don't know why. I don't know why you're laughing right now. Shoot. <laughs> But see yeah. dynamics. Oh man, the team is such a joy. Like there's just an exp- yeah. oh, they're just an explosion of joy. The team <laughs> or the team dynamics. Like really, I've always thought in my mind. Like imagine if every people group in South Africa, like if they just lived in one house. Like how would that happen? And yeah, I am oh, so with so, so, so much. You guys all live in one house. We all live in one house. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Come on. Wow, God. And <laughs> <laughs> and just to wow. see. It's really, it's really love. It's really lovely or refreshing to see mm. how we all respect each other's cultures. Like we all sensitive to. Okay, I grew up different than you, and so we need to mm. talk about these things. So it's it's a very patient relationship that we have with one another, um, and it's just so yeah. to learn. And it's just yeah, you do get those moments where it's like, okay, this is this is a tough one. How do we deal with this? How do we work around? Yeah. How we how do we keep the principles? of a thing and change the form, you know, cause principles, mm. they stay the same, just the form changes. And so we can, we can debate about the form or we can change the form, mm. but the principles, as long as the principles are the same, we all happy because we all want to live, uh, you know, uh, prin- mm. principles that are, that, that are true. So mm. it's really those things that keep us grounded, you know, that we don't just fall for anything and just argue about nonsense, but uh, that that wow. that keep us uh, that keep us happy, <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's, it's, yeah, the team dynamics. It's beautiful. It's not. It's not what I expected, especially growing up as the youngest. By eight mm. years, I was a loner. <laughs> I mm. was a real introvert growing up. So being a part of such a huge team of extroverts. <laughs> so it, it is true to say that the team <laughs> dynamics. I mean, South Roots right now. Um, bless it. It's. I think there's only one male, right? Yeah, yes, currently. All right, so for you listeners, if you're a male, don't join just because you want to be with amazing young women. <laughs> but uh, we do need young men in yes. in anywhere, in any sphere. But um, that yeah. is something I actually want to say too. <laughs> with the beautiful culture of South Africa, it being known as Rainbow Nation, the strength mm-hmm. in the women. And um, I mm-hmm. think South Roots does a very great job in um, in showing the example of godly led women, godly strong women. And it's Mm -hmm. not this intimidation stance, but it's just women who know their identity. And because when I I was a part of the team, it was me and two other guys and we got along, you know? Yeah, I mean, family's family and sometimes family's gonna be family. And you know, Mm -hmm. y'all know what I mean by that. But (laughs) for the most part, when you have a team, when there's there's all women, it's, so it's really neat to see how South Roots has taken on the whole love of a kingdom mindset. And so really, if someone was to do this internship, um, we truly know they would be uh, blessed and mm. their growth would just be, mm. it would be phenomenal. You know? Yeah, so you Amen. can find, you'll be able to find the links to the application forms and things like that in the notes for this podcast and you can look for South Roots International, their social media platforms. I've seen all this, the communication there. So, yeah, go and check it out. Angela, did you did you have any more burning things you wanted to say? I did want to say one little thing, but it, it, was there something you wanted to, to maybe say as well? Yeah, I think, can I go a little bit deeper mm-hmm. in the question? So I, I'm sure there's many people listening that are on a journey of trying to discover and embrace their cultural identity. Yeah, just just something that that's on your heart to encourage people in this journey. Is it worth taking going on this journey of mm. digging into the different roots and sides of who you are? Is it worth it? Mm. So yeah, God has really He's placed evidence of Himself within every people group, and when we want to know God, um, we see a lot of who He is in, or we see physically um his fingerprints in each other um but in ourselves it's important to recognize or to ask what is that fingerprint what does it look like um and to explore more of that but to explore more of that um you've gotta um be patient to trust his leading like i mentioned earlier to trust his leading that he will bring 
things as like he knows this timeline of your life and so he's gonna bring in things slowly but surely um that you can handle and that um that's gonna be beneficial to you so to trust him with that journey to commit that journey to him before you even start doing any sort of research or or whatever to know that 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 he's got this journey and that he's got you and and the generations after you in his hands um and that only gold can come out of that so it's really just trusting in him and then obviously doing your research talking to people listening to their stories your storytelling is so powerful you know you get to hear people's stories and then you get to see from your story how does that connect and just mm. just hearing stories sitting at the feet of your elders and and leaning from them and so just yeah to to allow god to just blow your mind it's it's really it's really um beneficial and um something that i think uncle rudy said that your freedom can be someone else's freedom and so just know that your journey towards finding your identity in your culture in your culture specifically that it can unlock the lives of so many other people if you just mm. commit to this journey give it to god and just do what you can and just allow him to do the rest mm. yeah well done yeah that's well spoken thank you <laughs> Yeah, honestly, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Angela, you said a word back on the eighth minute, which was growth. And honestly, for those that would be listening, people have no idea, actually. Um, but the growth that you have had and experienced, I met you when you first came. You were a timid, shy girl <laughs> who sat around and waited to be told. And you walked around almost on eggshells for quite some time. Mm. honestly, who you are now is completely different. And yeah, it's a cliche thing to say in the Christian world that, oh, you know, God changed us. But honestly, Angela, um, I saw a couple months ago you leading out on a dance. You, you've done so much. Mm. And honestly, there has been such growth and transformation in you. And so really, I I told Luis, I am, I've been very excited for this podcast because mm -hmm. you're someone that it's like it's worked. And you're an example of what it looks like when it works, when it works well because of your obedience. So honestly, mm -hmm. sis, you're amazing. And God's story in you of redemption and all that is, hey, if people only knew, you know? <laughs> and so honestly, it's just proud of you. Really Thank proud you of so you. much. Thank you yeah. so much. <laughs> Thank you, Angela. I know there's a lot of people, I mean, uh, that, can relate to what you said some has a lot of questions that still have to go on this journey and um i know you've encouraged them today to to do that follow us on the platform you listen to and do not miss our forthcoming episodes